Master, I'm coming. As I gaze around this room, I'm reminded of many tales of magic. Liberty, poverty, boo. And now, your host, Walt Disney. Perhaps there's no art more fascinating than magic. For us at the studio, magic is an all-important part of our business. After all, where would fantasy be without magic? Actually, there's a little of the magician in all of us. Even I have a trick or two up my sleeve. This is a magic pencil. Watch. Of course, it's a trick. But to us, the pencil really is a magic wand, enabling us to conjure up the most enchanting fantasies. And we have a property room here in the studio that's devoted entirely to magic. And through the years, we've collected quite a strange assortment of magic paraphernalia. Let me show it to you. It's way down in the basement. Liberty, poverty. Boo! Well, let's start with a few simple things. Here's one that's called the flowering chafing dish. After you're through using the chafing dish, you merely put the lid on it like this, Give it a magic word, bibbity bobbity boo. Take it off and have a beautiful centerpiece. Now, here's one that I kind of get a kick out of. It's called making many out of one. This little tube. Take this flower, throw it through like that. Nothing happens. But if you add the magic words to it, bibbity bobbity boo. Try that sometime. Now here's one that you no doubt have tried in your parlor. Levitation by concentration. Placing the hands on the table and concentrating, you make it rise into the air. I've probably done that many times. And it's no trick to you, but try it the hard way. What, a thousand pounds? The center of the table like that. Then, then you have to use the magic word. Bibbity, bobbity, boo. See what happens when you use magic words? <laughs> of course, you all know there's a trick to a thing like that. Now, over here, is a lovely little dish, the decapitated princess. Looks very lifelike, doesn't she? It's a wonderful conversation piece at parties. Instead of the flowers, you can put hors d'oeuvres in there and things. And if you're ever lonesome, with a magic word or two, it'll keep you from talking to yourself. Bibbity, bobbity, boo. Hello, princess. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. What time is it? Well, as far as you're concerned, it's the mid-20th century. The 20th century? Now, don't get alarmed, Princess. Just go back to sleep. Michikabula, bibbity, bobbity, boo. Sleep, Princess, sleep. Now, here's a magic prop that needs no introduction. Bibbity, bobbity, boo. Well, look what we have here. How do you do? How are you, little fellow? Hello, little girl. Come on. Stay there. What? Behind this curtain is perhaps our most well-known magic prop, the 
magic mirror from Snow White. I'm going to summon the slave in the mirror and turn the program over to him. Oh, slave in the magic mirror, cross the barriers of time and space, pierce the gloom and darkness. Let me see thy face. I'm coming. I'm coming. Greetings, Master. I've been expecting you. By the way, are you standing on your head or am I on mine? Well, I guess it's all in the point of view. There was something you wished to ask. Why, yes, I was hoping that you might tell us what you can about... I know, Master. Magic. How did you know? You forget, Master, that besides being a magician, my talents include foretelling the future. For instance, you're about to tell me the show is now mine. Well, yes, that's right. Well, I guess there's no further need of me. Then allow me, Master, to expedite your departure. Bibbity, bobbity, boo. Oh dear, I hope I haven't forgotten how to bring him back. Oh dear, is right, me and my sorcery. Oh, this is terrible, this... What's that? <laughs> Can't get rid of me that easily, old boy. Now I will leave on my own. Good show. That was a close one. And now, my friends, that that's off my mind, let's gaze about and see what we find. A silken hat, a wand or two. Oh, but first, a deck of cards will do. Cards arise and fly to me with a hip a stitch and a fiddle dee dee. Watch closely now and you'll see why the hand is quicker than the eye. But wait, one can't perform magic without music. Maestro? Put them together and what have you got? A bibbity bobbity boo. Not bad for a bit of prestidigitation. It's the way we magicians begin our conjuration. A sort of a tantalizing bit of hocus pocus to arouse your interest. bibbity bobbity boo. I can do magic, believe it or not. A bibbity bobbity boo. I can do magic, believe it or not, a bibbity bobbity boo. Ratatatum, deedle dee doo, doodle doo doodle dee dum. A ratatatatum, deedle dee dum, bibbity bobbity boo. A saligadool, a michigadool, a bibbity bobbity boo. A ratatatatum, and what have you got? A bibbity bobbity boo.
As I gaze around this room, I am reminded of many tales of magic that I would like to tell. There's a powerful story of sorcery behind this magic hat. Then, we're going to delve into the realm of witches, goblins, and spirits. And while we're on the subject of pumpkins, we're going to discover how a fairy godmother brought the magic of love to Cinderella. And of course, no magic show would be complete without a magician. And who's better prepared than Mickey? Oh, his career reads like a book. Mountain climbing one minute, fighting giants the next. So it isn't surprising that magic is included in his repertoire. It's only me. I mean I. My, isn't it a wonderful night? Sort of reminds one of Halloween, that centuries-old evening devoted to witches, spooks, and goblins. In my day, it was a night for witchcraft and deviltry. Today, however, Halloween has become a festive evening of ringing doorbells, soaping windows, bobbing for apples, etc. As the witching hour approaches, nearly everyone is busy as a bee. And Donald and his nephews are no exception. You see? <laughs> I'll wager these demons have a trick or two up their sleeves. <gasps> oh, oh, the old devil is busy too, cooking up some special treat. <laughs> well, it looks like it's going to be quite a Halloween, doesn't it? Yes, it certainly is, because we decided to add a little spice by introducing a real 15th century witch. I wish to tell now is a particularly beautiful one. It's a love story, a fairy tale, full of sweet romance that everyone holds dear. And though it's been told a thousand times, it always moves me. Here. I'm speaking, of course, of the classic fairy tale, Cinderella. It was the power of magic, you know, that made Cinderella's dream come true. As you recall, Cinderella was forced to become a servant in her own home. Dominated by an evil stepmother and her two selfish daughters, her only companions were her animal friends. The big event in Cinderella's life was the royal ball, but Cinderella who was never permitted to have anything decent to wear, was forced to remain at home. But this was only the beginning to a very, very magic evening. And so you see, it was the enchantment of magic that led Cinderella to her prince. And of course, they lived happily ever after. And now for the finale. As I promised, a bit of sorcery. This is the most powerful magic of all. The sorcerer aware of his great powers, has jealously guarded his secrets through the centuries, lest they fall into the wrong hands. There's a famous tale, nearly 2,000 years old, where sorcery did fall into the wrong hands. The sorcerer's apprentice. Centuries later, it was told in verse by the German poet Goethe. 
And then the famous French composer Paul Duca set the poem to music. Here then were the magic ingredients necessary for Walt's magic pencil. And so the wizardry and artistry of the studio was set to work to create the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And when this magic was wedded to the music of the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra, under the enchanted direction of Leopold Stakowski, the important part of our musical pageant, Fantasia, was brought to life. 